All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to the Glendale Community Council meeting, our August meeting. Um, tonight, I have just one quick change to the schedule. Uh, Council member Andrew Johnston is going to join. Um, and when he has the opportunity to, we'll, we'll let him join uh, just at whatever point is most convenient for him. Uh, there was another obligation that before this meeting. Um, and so we'll go ahead and make that exception just as soon as he joins. Um, first, I, I should say for those that are watching this live on our Facebook page, um, I would invite you if you have questions or comments about the meeting, if you just put them in the chat, I can go ahead and ask them on your behalf to our guests. Um, and then in the future, we encourage you to RSVP uh, so that you can get the Zoom link. We, we keep the Zoom link private just so that we don't have any disruptions or uh, any of the Zoom bombing nonsense. But with that, uh, the first person that we have on our agenda tonight is uh, uh, Detective Oliver from Salt Lake City Police Department. He is our community liaison. Um, I believe that he has joined. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm in my car, so it's gonna be a little bit echoey. Um, first, are there any questions, concerns, or anything? Is it's been it's been a, probably four or five months since we met last, correct? Four months. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's been a couple months. So, are there any questions that anybody has, concerns that they are seeing in their neighborhood that uh, maybe hasn't been addressed by the police department, or or thinks that they should be addressed by the police department as of right now? Uh, I, I'll start. Um, one of the things that I've noticed just looking at our next door account and even on our social media, we've seen an uptick in vehicle burglaries and that type of thing. Um, it seems to be there's quite a bit of property crime right now as well. Um, I, I just like to bring that up. If there's someone else on the call, I know that we had others that were joining tonight that wanted to talk about that, but I Correct. guess I can just that. So in the last 28 days, um, just by our numbers, it's gone up 48%. Uh, in motor vehicle theft. The previous seven days was had seen a 105% increase. So yeah, vehicle theft is is taken off in the Glendale area right now. This is all of District 2. So this is uh, again, Poplar Grove, Glendale, and a small portion of Fair Park. So I mean, that kind of spreads it out a little bit, but we're still seeing it um, throughout District 2, which is which of course is, is the Glendale area as well. Um, with that, burglaries has also gone up by about 100% in the last seven days. So um, a lot of this can be attributed to the COVID, uh, the COVID the, the issues we had uh, just because people were in their house and they were getting sick of being in their house. And we got, had all the crimes that were occurring with um, the population that just were, you know, didn't want to really go through the COVID uh, regulations that, that were occurring. So we did see a lot of that uh, happening at that time. So you're correct. There, there, we are seeing a lot of car prowls and car thefts going on in Glendale right now. Uh, thank you. Is that, anyone else have questions? Man, I could get used to Zoom if there's no questions. This is great. All right. Um, do you have any updates that you would like to give specifically from the police department? Sure. Um, we are seeing an increase in homelessness around the area. So you, I'm sure you've seen it along the Jordan River Parkway. Um, so that is, we are aware of that, and, and it's, it's really all over the place. It's, it's from the, uh, the foothills all the way out to the industrial area. So 7,200 west up to, up to the University of Utah is seeing an increase in, um, in homelessness. And with the, COVID, with the COVID restrictions that, we were, that were put on with the mayor, um, we were seeing a lot of RVs. You'd probably see a lot of RVs, especially down at 17th South, around the uh, old uh, Raging Waters. A lot of people are, are living in RVs and, and um, restrictions on that were, were relaxed. So we, there's not a lot we can do um, with, with those. It used to be they could only be there for 48 hours and then they had to move. Well, now there's no time limit. Um, I'm, I'm hearing rumors and Josh can probably answer this. Josh Rebello can probably answer this better than I can about um, tightening those restrictions again. Uh, so he might have more, more, uh, more information on that than I, than I can give you. So we are very aware of the RVs that are all over the place. Um, the people that are living in the RVs, living in cars, living in trucks. Um, you know, if they're, if they're uh, not licensed or not insured, we can do something about it. But if they are, it's really, it's really hard to, to enforce any laws on that. 
Thank you. Uh, any final questions? And I'll, I'll be on the Zoom meeting for the whole the whole time. So if there are any questions that pop up, and I can just unmute and, and see if I can answer them. I, thank you. Appreciate it. I do have a question. It's just follow up to what you just said, um, officer, about uh, the trailers and RVs and campers and even utility trailers. <laughs> are right. Parked on the streets. I've called on that a few times and reported every time I see it, and they always say that regulation isn't being enforced right now. And they've called the mayor's office and. I'm not sure if it's you that I spoke to, Josh, or not. It was a Josh at the mayor's office. Um, uh -huh. And they said they're thinking about changing that or looking into it. There may be an update. So if, if somebody has an update on that, that would be good. Thanks. You bet. Uh, all right. Uh, with that, Josh, uh, we'll go ahead and move into the mayor's office report. Okay, thanks. And apologies, I'm not going to have a working camera right now, so uh, uh, you'll just hear my voice. Um, so I'm the uh, community liaison in the mayor's office for uh, District 2, and uh, it's been a while since I've been in a Glendale meeting, so it's nice to be back, even if uh, in, we're in Zoom. I've gotten quite used to Zoom meetings over the past few months. Um, I'm guessing we'll continue that way for, for a while. Um, so, uh, yeah, to answer the question on the the RVs, the restrictions and then parking limits, I yeah I know it's being uh, heavily looked at right now at the the by the senior advisors, of uh, the mayor, the chief of staff, and our uh, chief administrative officer, um, due to the the number of issues that we're seeing, you know, particularly along 1700 South, um, and with the streets for storage ordinance that had been um, lifted. As you may have seen, uh, parking meters in the city are now being uh, enforced again. And so those those time restrictions and those, those meters are being enforced. So um, yeah, I would say that, you know, it's being looked at to resume uh, enforcement on the streets for storage. I don't have any strict uh, timeline to say, you know, we're going to have a decision tomorrow. We're going to have it this week, but I am going to uh, press to get more information on that this week and uh, give it to, I can forward it to any of you who would like. Uh, we have a chat funk chat in box here in the, in the meeting. I'll go ahead and put my contact info there um, in a minute here and feel free to reach out to me uh, anytime just to, to uh, get any updates on when uh, those restrictions will be lifted. Um, so yeah, I wish I had a better answer on that. Unfortunately, I don't, but um, I'm happy to help and, and provide information as I get it to anyone who needs it. Um, moving on to some other uh, items. I just have a, a few. I don't want to take uh, too much time. I know we have a good number of people on the agenda. Um, the mayor uh, proposed uh, six different budget uh, proposals at kind of uh, addressing some short and long-term equity needs in the city related to uh, COVID recovery. And just to uh, go down the list on some of these, and of course these have to, to be approved by the council. And I see uh, council member Johnston's on here and can put, probably speak uh, more, more to it. But um, association for, so additional funding for the Utah Community Health for uh, improvements to digital equity and improving public Wi-Fi in the city to try to bridge uh, the gap on, on uh, Wi-Fi access um, and digital inequity. Uh, more uh, funding, 25,000 for the water assist program uh, to help residents in paying their utility bills. Um, an arts grant to uh, enhance racial equity, uh, individual artists of color um, organizations serving uh, the community and working to develop um, equity inclusion training. And then the Suazo Center, um, additional 25,000, which would assist the center in its uh, mission in helping businesses in diverse communities throughout the city. Um, and then the other budget uh, proposal was 50,000 for the Sorensen Impact uh, Bond Study. So which is uh, it would allow the city to work with the Sorensen Center, Impact Center, to conduct a feasibility study on uh, innovative uh, tools to uh, create more social and racial equity. Um, and so, yeah, those are just some of the 
uh, proposals that are being made by the mayor um, that are submitted to the council for approval. Um, moving on. So the uh, just a couple of community announcements that are not necessarily located in the mayor's office, but just something that it'd be nice for everyone to be aware of. And I'll share some links in the chat in a minute after I'm done. Uh, the U of U uh, wellness bus, which does COVID-19 testing, uh, adjusted schedule from time to time. And so um, this month, they're Thursdays and Fridays over at Sorensen Center. Um, and so I'll provide the link for that to keep an eye on the schedule there. Um, UTAs, as you know, a lot of the service had been reduced due to COVID-19. Um, on change day, which is on August 23rd, uh, coming up here in a few days, about 90% of that service is going to be restored in the city. Um, and so encourage people that uh, rely on public transit and are interested in that to take a look at that. I'll, again, I'll provide the link. Um, in the transportation uh, division, I know we have someone from transportation here that might address this, but um, one of the surveys that we have there is the street typologies design survey you may have heard of. And it's just basically how the city designates different streets um, in the city and what, what type of streets they are and what they're used for. And it helps the city make improvements to, um, to our public streets moving forward. And so that survey is continuing open through August 31st. So I'd encourage those uh, who are interested to take a look at the materials on there. It's pretty interesting and um, respond to the survey if you have the time. Uh, back on the uh, digital equity, issue Rose Park uh, there's the Rose Park Connect program which is providing free computer and internet access for individuals which is at the uh, Rose Park LDS Stake Center which is on 1200 West 760 North 1200 West and uh, I'll put the schedule in there. that's Mondays and Wednesdays at 8 to 11 a.m. and then Tuesdays and Thursdays 7 to 9 p.m. and I understand I've heard that uh, there's going to be a similar program coming here to Glendale for the Sor at the Sorensen uh, Unity Center, uh, I think starting next week. Uh, I don't have any other details on that one. Um, and in <coughs> addition to that, uh, the community outreach team here in the mayor's office, we put out newsletters every week, giving updates from throughout the city. And uh, I'll provide a link to uh, get those those newsletters that we put out every week and it has a number of um, helpful information for different programs and initiatives being provided by the city and the county and the state and uh, that's all I have for now I'd be happy to answer any questions from anyone for the mayor's office Jeremy, I think you're on mute. Sorry, yeah, I was. Um, I'm used to uh, Teams. Um, Josh, I, I wonder if you could elaborate for us um, anything about the mayor's office's n initiative on um, policy towards police department and the changes that are proposed for that. Is there anything you can share with us on that issue? Yeah, um, and so the, I know the city council authorized the, uh, the recently formed commission on racial equity and policing. And that, that commission is really um, designed to be independent of, of the mayor's office and of the council to really look at the practices and budget of, uh, of the police department and make a series of recommendations to the mayor and council. Um, and that, that's gonna take you know, some time for them to go through and do the meticulous work of, of, of going through the department's policies and budget and make recommendations that would, um, of course, you know, maintain safety while you know, trying to you know, in increase the um, confidence that communities of color have in, in the policing system in the city and making improvements there. So as um, another, as I'm sure you may, may have heard of a number of uh, reforms that have been um, 
agreed upon by the mayor um, and the police chief that are are being made. Um, I was, I'm sorry, I, I had a thing in front of me where I was reading off of those a minute. Okay, so these policy changes that I think that's what you were referring to. Um, so yeah, I can I can speak uh, a little bit to those. Um, there's sort of a it's an executive order that uh, the mayor put out directing uh, Chief Brown to make uh, a series of reforms to the department's policies by September 5th, um, and those cover use of force, body worn cameras, and search and seizure uh, methods. And so I, I can. I mean, I could go through them. I don't know how much detail you want on that, or if you if you've been aware of what those reforms are, or those policy changes are. I can also provide a a, a link to those. Um, Jeremy, I don't know if you were uh, asking about a specific one. Um, no, nothing, nothing specific. But if there is anything on on the city website, yeah, I think that's useful enough. If you can provide a link. Yeah, I will provide the link. I'm. Uh, I've typed up some links and having the chat function in the Zoom meetings is kind of helpful because a lot of what we share is it's kind of found uh, online really easily. Um, and so I'll share that as well. Thank you. Hi, this is Sean Martin at the Sorensen Unity Center. Turner, is it okay if I follow up a little bit and just give a brief update to follow up with the mayor? Because she did bring up digital equity. Um, we do have computer access at the Unity Center. We opened about three weeks ago. Um, the Sorensen Center has had computer access for the last 20 years of free computer access. We have reopened during COVID in our lobby with about six computers, internet, printing, scanning. There will be a mailing going out, um, I think Thursday or Friday to the Rose Park and Glendale zip codes um, that will mention the Rose Park Connect as well as Sorensen with the hours and it's, it's, it's coming from the census, but they do um, mention the two places where people can go for computer access um, to do the census as well as sign up for the pandemic EBT benefits. So <clears throat> we are open. It's more of a limited hours basis that that postcard will go out Thursday or Friday and you should get it by early next week. It's important that that's going out for folks, obviously, that don't have internet access. So to follow up on that, in addition to Rose Park, Sorensen is open. Donated Dental remains open. Um, they will start Youth City again in the fall. Um, and um, to follow up, I know Andrew's on this message and there was a lot last night on digital equity and the, the increase of wireless within the city. It was a big umbrella conversation, but no, we're in conversations to make that focused at Youth City sites. Um, Unity um, already had internet access, but we've beefed up our Wi-Fi. It is now all outside on the grounds. That's tough when it's really warm outside, but when temperature drops um, or in the parking lot, there is it is lit up with Wi-Fi. Um, so that's happening at the Unity Center. We have reopened on a limited basis. We're still pending opening of fitness um, and gyms because of health concerns, obviously. Uh, but those are on a to be determined basis with the county and um, health concerns. I'm happy to answer any questions um, if anybody has on Sorensen programming um, and what's happening with school coming on. We're, we're gearing up to educate our staff. We have Spanish speakers to help with families on helping parents register kids for school if they don't have internet and when school starts to be able to have a level of uh, support for parents and kids to come in to access. It's a huge issue. Um, I know the school is giving out devices and other United Way is giving out devices. So we're there as a support with Spanish speakers, internet access and, um, and help and, and uh, with, with folks there that can help them access and do and wise use of the technology so we just don't throw it out there. Thank you. Andrew, if you just want to unmute, go ahead. Uh, sure. Th thanks, Sean. Can I just uh, ask if you know more details about the Glendale Connect um, concept they talked about? They, they threw out a couple of things that I want to just double check if you've heard this. Sure. Uh, starting next week at some point, they'll officially launch Glendale Connect. But the 
hour should be expanded to like 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Right. So basically, we've always had internet at the Unity Center with hardwire, yeah. and we had we had inside wireless that a few people did use outside at our picnic tables. Um, they just really increased the external Wi-Fi access. So what they're doing is is, is getting a City Connect. Um, message out there, Rose Park Connect and then Glendale Connect and other neighborhoods may follow. So the Glendale Connect is basically the message so folks know in Glendale um, that now it's lit up now. I think they're announcing it next week. We were working out the kinks and, and how far we could go out. Um, it may not be live, whatever, I don't know, from midnight to six in the morning. I'm not sure. Um, but that's basically the Glendale Connect is the increased bandwidth and widespread of the wireless that goes to the bus stops, it goes to the parking lot, it goes to the grounds to the east. A um, few of the houses across the street are going to get lucky on this. Uh, so, um, and then we have it inside as well, but inside we have um, actual computers that are on our internal wireless or plugged in. So that was the general and part of that backhaul conversation was increased being able to do that to the next step, maybe other youth city sites within the city or at IMS when youth city goes into IMS or other, I, I was part, I was listening to that and those were good questions you were answering of how are we gonna wrangle this and what's happening where, and there's challenges, you know, people wanna be in their home using internet, um, but this is to be able to get more public access space as well as the libraries that are gonna light up outside. Along with that, we're looking to get more picnic tables, more shade, more charging stations. It's still challenging. As you said, you were sitting out on steps getting internet, I don't know where it was, at the at Day, at, uh, Day Riverside or at, or at Chapman, uh, probably as a grad student, right? Getting some downloads there. Um, so that's always a challenge. They wanna be in their home using it. Um, but we're doing as much as we can to kind of expand that footprint out and make more places accept, uh, uh, accessible to that in addition to the libraries. Um, the, the Rose Park Connect is the, the steakhouse, which is a good first step. I think the city provided the laptops for that. Uh, the volunteers came from the neighborhood and the internet was provided by the steakhouse. So that's the Glendale Connect starting point. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate that clarification. Thanks, Sean. Um, Andrew, I think we'll just transition if you'd like to give an update, just build on that. Okay. Uh, thanks, Turner. Um, I, I think uh, folks have done a good job so far, Josh and Sean, talking about some of the things. Uh, the, the mayor's office last night uh, proposed a budget amendment. So uh, we have the base budget for the entire year and then we want to spend more money or change the budget throughout the year we call it an amendment and there can be multiple amendments throughout the year we're on amendment number two already in august for this year starting in july um and so last night the proposal was for a lot of things josh had talked about one of the things was um well, a lot of it was based on covid needs right now particularly um hazard pay for frontline workers in the city who haven't had that so far um, some more money for West Side personal protective equipment and some auxiliary things associated with that. Uh, I know they've done a good job here trying to get out basic necessities like diapers to families and things. And this funding would help um, sort of uh, work with that as well. Um, revitalizing the water assistance program. So folks who have a hard time paying their water bill, the city utility water bill can get some relief through that fund through the city. Um, it was down pretty low, so we had we uh, refilled that. And we voted yes on all this last night, so they are official at this point. Um, some more money for the rental rent assistance and mortgage assistance for folks. Um, also an accelerator program, uh, which is essentially based on other cities where the federal stimulus money that came in a couple months ago for, uh, for individuals and families um, had some exclusions. If your family had mixed citizenship, for instance, uh, you might not have gotten some of that. And uh, so in our neighborhood, particularly where we have a lot of folks, uh, minority uh, population folks and folks who probably also have family members with different citizenship statuses, um, the city is proposing to put, uh, put some money into a fund to help those folks who didn't get initial stimulus monies. Um, 
and we'll have more details on that as it comes out. Uh, the other ideas were to expand the youth city program from three to nine hours, um, which would help a lot with, uh, instead of just after school care during the school year, uh, some extended hours for families. The digital equities question is a big one. Um, the concrete thing we passed last night was this backhaul concept, which uh, the city fire department uses where there's some equipment on a hill essentially, and it allows uh, stations to have uh, access to a private Wi-Fi network for their needs and essentially putting equipment up there for a public Wi-Fi network across the city, which would tie into public buildings. So conceivably, um, it could be on any public building we wanted, which would extend a Wi-Fi um, area around that building uh, for the public. Um, they've talked about having buses or other mobile ones where we could put it in the community around neighborhoods to try and get as close to, um, to homes and, and families as possible. So that's all part of that. Uh, which we discussed last night. Uh, the other thing which you may or may not be aware of is um, the, the city has a full list of COVID resources right now. And that's, those can be found on the city website under the mayor's tab and it's COVID-19. So if you go to Salt Lake City, um, slc.gov forward slash, I wanna say mayor forward slash COVID-19. It's a pretty extensive list of resources the city has that we can put out to folks. I'm not sure how many people actually know about it and it could be really helpful right now. The other thing that is probably important to talk about a little bit at least is the Commission on Racial Equity and Policing. Um, this is a joint commission that was authorized officially last night by the council and the mayor. Um, it is working completely independently from either of our offices. So they have, they've requested the staff they need. It's, uh, they're following I think open meetings laws as well. So they'll have, um, notes of their meetings and minutes. Um, and they're actually meeting uh, where they've chosen to have, I think the library at this point. So they are completely separate. We've been asking them to take a full review of uh, city policies, both internal policing and, and I hope external to policing about equity in general, which might relate to it and providing recommendations to the city council and the mayor's office. Um, the policy changes the mayor put forward were from her office um, as she oversees police and she can do that immediately. So she took some actions about things she felt were important immediately to do uh, reg regarding the things Josh talked about earlier. Um, further changes would come through uh, probably, she could do what she needs or she feels like she should. Um, however, if it's a budget change, it's gotta come through the city council and large policy changes have to come through the city council as well. Um, it's sort of a gray line in there someplace. Uh, so as we look at their, at the police budget this coming year, uh, we intend to take it from a zero um, sum budgeting kind of place where generally you take the previous year's budget and then you modify it going forward because you assume that certain things carry over or it's based on certain principles. Um, doing it as a zero base means you start with zero anywhere. There's no budget for police and then you build it based on what you believe the needs are. Um, if you can sort of imagine doing that for the entire city, you can see why we don't do that for the entire city every year. It would be exhausting and hard. We don't have the staff to do it. Um, for the police department at this point, we felt it was important enough to do that, that we're gonna spend a lot of time. Um, I have some personal opinions about the direction it might lead. Um, and we can talk about that if that's interesting at some point, but I don't wanna take too much time here unless Turner wants me to. Um, but that commission is meeting ongoing um, they've selected, uh, we made recommendations and for a core group and then that core group has selected the rest of the commission members independent of us. Um, and I believe they've, uh, have a subgroup for youth. In fact, it's meeting as well. And, uh, I think they announced that throughout the next 12 months, they're going to be, um, putting forth recommendations or final recommendations at the end of that as well. Um, a lot of we talk about with equity is probably going to have a major influence on our neighborhood. Um, we know that uh, we have the most diverse neighborhoods in the city. We know that we are majority minority, um, depending on what the next census tells us. And so a lot of the uh, inequities that um, I think we've talked about as Westsiders for a lot of years are deeply ingrained into uh, racial inequity. And so when the mayor talks about um, looking through a lens of equity at the city and the city council, I think agrees with that. It also means we put our money where our mouth is, um, in my personal opinion. And we've got to fund things that have been underfunded for a long time and address those equities across 
uh, housing, zoning. Um, I think all city departments, it's gotta be a part of what we talk about. Police are just one piece of this. It's not, um, police reforms are not necessarily gonna lead to full societal equity we're trying to get to in the city and lead on that. So uh, there'll be a lot more to come that way, but um, my hope is that, uh, my expectation is the budget should reflect that um, in different ways. And it's gonna be a long haul, uh, probably many years of this, but we're starting now. Uh, there's probably a quick update on the 13 South um, Three Creeks Confluence Park, but somebody else may already have that on their uh, agenda tonight. If you could give an update, nobody else tonight has that on their agenda. Okay. Uh, I know that uh, David has uh, texted, I can't remember, texted or emailed, one of the two, um, about this issue. They've stopped work on the park. Um, the last correspondence I've gotten from them is they still intend on finishing this year. Um, the later in August it gets, the more I'm concerned about that. However, um, the rationale they've said is a couple of things. One was um, some delay in the uh, bridge, the second bridge to put in the fishing pier. Um, some issue with the water runoff and some work on the, um, uh, some more of the reservoir on the east bench that uh, releases water down into what would come out here in the Jordan River, which would affect their ability to do the construction. And I think David had a quick question. There was a rumor that said uh, uh, subcontractors hadn't been paid and therefore stopped working. Um, I've gotten confirmation that there was late payment on one at least, um, but that's all I've heard about that piece. They're still saying they'll finish it this year. So um, I'll follow up with them on that. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, any questions for, for Andrew? Thank you. Um, with that, let's move on to Will uh, from Salt Lake City Transportation. Hey, thanks, Turner. Uh, thanks, everybody, for having me uh, join your meeting this evening. Um, so I'm Will Becker with Salt Lake City Transportation Division. And uh, is everybody hearing me good? Awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm just here tonight to announce a uh, project that uh, we're going to be uh, with it we, that we've started um, collecting some feedback on, and and that's um, really what we wanted to uh, to come and discuss tonight is kind of make make everybody aware and get um, as much help as we can kind of spreading the word. Um, so we're looking at uh, making some safety improvements to the intersection of 900 West and California Ave. Um, as I'm sure, you know, all of you uh, are aware, the intersection is, is, is really important. We've got two major streets running through, through the Glendale neighborhood there um, with a lot of important community destinations, uh, Unity, uh, Thornton Unity, and uh, cultural, multicultural center being right there. Um, parks, schools, library, all very close nearby um, and, and being in the middle of, of, the, of the residential neighborhood right there. Um, so it's, it's, it's a priority for the city, certainly, to, um, to look at making some, some improvements at that intersection that focus specifically on, um, on, on people that are walking and bicycling and using assistive mobility devices, taking transit. Um, you know, we want, uh, especially with, with a lot of children and families, to um, really feel comfortable using that intersection in whatever mode they're using uh, to travel through there. Um, you have bike lanes on both of those streets. Um, so you also have some, um, some bicycle activity there um, for people not only in the neighborhood, but also that are traveling to other areas in the city. Um, and you also have uh, quite a fair amount of, um, of vehicle traffic traveling through that intersection as well. Um, either residents or folks accessing other parts of the city or, or getting onto the freeway. So there's a lot going on at that intersection. Um, so what we're doing right now is, is making a project announcement. We have a, uh, we have a, a project website up um, where we have a survey both in Spanish and English. So we're trying to um, get some initial feedback on that intersection. Um, what people's experience are with that. 
um, what kind of challenges they have in using that intersection um, so that it can help us as we're thinking about potential design solutions um, to improving safety there. Uh, for the last couple of weeks, we have been uh, sending out flyers to uh, throughout the community, and then we've also um, on foot gone out and talked to uh, some of the residents and businesses immediately surrounding that intersection as well. Um, and we've been able to put up a, a couple posters, um, and so this is all just you know trying to make sure that we spread the word as much as as, as we can and get it as many people to uh, be involved and help um, spread the word about the survey so that we get that uh, feedback as we uh, start start looking at uh, at the type of improvements that we'll, we're, we'll be proposing. Um, so that's really, uh, you know, what I'm here tonight to discuss and, and just make that announcement. If there's any questions that you have though, I'm happy to, uh, to do what I can to answer, to answer that. Will, when, when is the uh, survey open until? Yeah, good question. Surveys open um, through the end of August, so uh, August 31st. And let me uh, just copy a link in here to uh, the chat um, for the project website. Thanks, Will. Um, just to build, this fits perfectly with our next agenda item, but I just want to add on to what Will has said that we get a lot of requests like this for feedback and for helping get the word out for surveys and that type of thing. So um, the last agenda item that we'll talk about tonight, we're looking at putting together a committee to help with this. Um, we are working to schedule a, a little bit of an in-person kind of visioning process for projects like this that really impact the entire neighborhood, um, we the community council is going to schedule, try to do some in-person events to gather feedback from all residents that can come to those events or online. Um, and then we can submit them as the community council and kind of aggregate feedback in, in addition to encouraging folks to submit them through uh, the, the survey process. I'll talk about this more when we get to the last agenda item, but. I just wanted to flag that for everyone. That would be great, thank you. Uh, are there any other questions for Will? All right, thanks Will, thanks for being here. Um, I'm gonna switch the next two agenda items up just a little bit. Um, so the next thing I'd like to do is introduce Lily and Brandon who've joined us. Lily and Brandon are students at the University of Utah are helping us with um, our community visioning process that we're working on called One Glendale. Um, basically, what the idea was with this is we receive a, a lot of different feedback from a lot of different folks about different issues in the neighborhood. And many of them come up repeatedly and we have consistent themes that uh, have arisen. And what we wanted to do was do a little bit of a visioning process with the neighborhood doing some surveys and really working to engage our neighbors to create um, a strategic plan, if you will, for the community council. This is not meant to be, you know, set in stone and, and super, super rigid, but really to create some guardrails for us as a community council to understand the priorities of folks in the neighborhood so that when we have opportunities to engage with the city or when we receive requests for feedback, that we have some goalposts, if you will. Um, and the idea is to really engage a lot of neighbors that are not traditionally represented here at these meetings um, and to go out into the community and do some, some visioning. So an example of what that looks like is looking at Raging Water site. There's been a lot of conversation about it. Um, and we wanna just get folks out there having a conversation about what is important to the neighborhood um, at that site. Not necessarily to say, hey, do this, but to have a conversation so folks understand what that looks like, what the process could be, um, that type of thing. I don't know, uh, not to put you on the spot, Lily and Brandon, but if, if you'd like to introduce yourselves and maybe talk about what you've been doing so far to get ready and, and if you wanna share the process or, or whatever, but don't feel like you have to, to share anything that you're not ready to. 
Sure, um, I can go first, I guess. Uh, so my name's Brandon. Um, I, like Turner said, I'm a student at the U um, in the Masters of City Planning program. Um, I moved here from St. Louis last year to start the program and I've uh, got some experience working with community involvement and community development in the past in some um, city, uh, city neighborhoods in St. Louis. Um, and I'm really excited to be working on this project. Um, so far, we've um, been working on some stuff like putting surveys together and collecting kind of like relevant city documents and plans that kind of um, relate to the neighborhood. And then we're you know, hopefully gonna try to get into a process where we start to pull out some of like the broader goals of the city and kind of mesh those into some community engagement and just kind of put together a, a really nice vision for the neighborhood that's really based in some um, high quality community involvement. Yeah, so thanks for having us tonight. I am also a second year with Brandon at the U um, studying with the city metropolitan planning department. Um, I moved here last year from Durango, Colorado. Um, and I also did some community planning there and stuff before moving up here for getting a graduate degree. And yeah, we're both really looking forward to being a part of this process. And we've been working with Turner for a bit now trying to um, get a good well-rounded steering committee to address as many of these issues as um, that have come up tonight and that we've also discussed in other meetings, but we want to make sure that we don't miss anything crucial and that we have a really diverse set of voices and organizations represented throughout the whole process. So um, we're open to feedback at any point. And yeah, so for the first couple months here, we're like Brandon said, just gathering a lot of data, trying to figure out what's out there, not necessarily redo anything that's already been done. And that includes the West Side Master Plan, but instead to just kind of um, look at some rising issues as the community evolves and grows. And um, yeah, try to get a nice visioning document with some specific strategies and goals for Turner's uh, time while he's chair and then beyond that as well. Thank you. Uh, and, and the idea is we, we don't intend to duplicate any of the master plans that the city's put together. We don't intend for this to be a, a master plan of, of any sense. The idea is to take all of these different resources that exist, do some community engagement, and give uh, the community council at least some guardrails as far as how we move forward as, a, as an organization. I, I know that uh, Jeremy's been involved with the community council for a long time and um, I, I was a, an officer before I was the chair and one of the things I'd like to do is whoever succeeds me to be able to hand them a document that says, you know, we worked with the neighborhood and here are some of the things that came up, consistent themes, um, so that there's less of a learning curve, I guess, for, for the next group of folks that volunteer their time with the community council. And the, the process moving forward next Wednesday is our first steering committee. Um, I invite anybody who wants to be involved in that, you are more than welcome to join the steering committee. It will be next August. If you would just email me at the email that I am putting in the chat and I can send you the, the Zoom link for that. Um, but uh, basically after that meeting, the idea is that there will be a series of one on ones scheduled where Lily and Brandon will work with individuals to kind of have longer conversations about specific issues or specific things. That includes, of course, all of our elected officials. Uh, it includes uh, former community council board members, residents, um, leaders of institutions like Sorensen Center, uh, University Neighborhood Partners, NeighborWorks, um, all of the different organizations that are working to make Glendale what it is. Um, and then in the spring to really bring forward and, and maybe later in the fall, to bring forward some more community engagement for, for residents to have specific conversations about issues. Um, but trying to take more of a holistic approach to visioning the neighborhood than responding each individual time to each individual issue. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to answer questions or I'm, I'm sure Lily and Brandon would be as well uh, if there are any. Okay, um, so uh, the last thing that I would like to talk about 
is for the last almost a year, we have been working to create um, uh, an affiliate of Keep America Beautiful here in Glendale called Keep Glendale Beautiful. We have uh, another intern who is working full time on that project with us. Uh, he was unable to join us tonight, but we'll be introducing him in September. Uh, basically, the idea with Keep Glendale Beautiful is we are going to work on neighborhood beautification in from everything from litter pickup and control to graffiti control to tree plantings, um, everything that goes into making a neighborhood more beautiful. We have some fun ideas for doing some sidewalk artwork, um, some pop-up, just different fun things to build community and build community identity here. Um, we have two upcoming events. The first one is on September 19th, and I'll put the link into these as soon as I'm done talking. Uh, but September 19th, um, we are doing, we're partnering with the Benyon Center to do the Legacy of Lowell event here in Glendale, which we've done every year, I believe for like 15 years. Um, this year's project will be a little bit different. We've divided the neighborhood up into zones. We're going to go out and clean up every part of the neighborhood. And we have some door hangers talking about keep Glendale beautiful. So we will hit every house in Glendale, clean up every park, every part of the city, with the exception of the golf course, because we've been told to not do that. That's, they don't want us to do that. Um, but we, we plan to, uh, we'll, we'll be providing all the equipment, gloves, sanitation, some treats, um, but hitting every single door, every single area of the neighborhood for a comprehensive litter cleanup that morning. And then also, uh, there'll be some other little things that are tied in there with that. Um, but it'll be the kickoff for Keep Glendale Beautiful. And then the week after that, on September 26th, we are doing a paddle and a pickup event. So we've partnered with the Jordan River Commission and we'll be cleaning up our section, the Glendale section of the Jordan River here in the neighborhood. Uh, we have two shifts. The first will be from nine to noon and the second will be from one to four. Um, all of the equipment, everything is being provided and uh, we just invite folks to get involved, come out with us. Um, and, and we plan as part of Keep Glendale Beautiful to partner with organizations like NeighborWorks, which does Rake Your Heart Out. Um, and, and Jasmine, I, I, this is kind of putting you on the spot as well, but if you wanna talk about some of the things that NeighborWorks has done that we've talked about partnering on, um, I'll give you that opportunity. If you don't want to, uh, don't feel like I, I, I'm forcing you to. Sorry guys, I stepped away for just a second, so I missed the first part of what you said, Turner. Yeah, I was just talking about Keep Glendale Beautiful and the different ways that we plan to work with you. I was talking about Rake, um, rake Your Heart Out and is it Paint Your Heart Out as well? Yeah, uh, yeah. Talk about those two events. Yeah, so both of these events are annual events. We've been doing Paint Your Heart Out for, I don't know, maybe like 16 years or more. And Rake Your Heart Out is a fairly new event that we've done the last uh, two years. Um, and so both of them have an emphasis on just beautifying the neighborhood and they're really meant for um, people who don't have the means to either paint their home themselves or if they're elderly and just can't get out and do it themselves. Um, and so we do that. We usually organize between uh, like somewhere between 500 volunteers and we normally try to shoot for a target of painting um, 15 homes. Um, and so what that is, is basically we get all of the volunteers together. Uh, we prep them about a month before to go out and paint their houses. And then um, they spend the entire like morning just transforming somebody's house. So it's really impactful, um, really great uh, residents who are participants of it, great volunteers. It's really, really a fun day. And then Rake Your Heart Out is its sister to Paint Your Heart Out. Um, and this one was just because we had a group of volunteers who really wanted to continue being involved in the community. And so we put this event together for them specifically. And now we're just trying to continuously replicate it. The one thing that we've had an issue with over the last two years is just really being able to find those houses on the west side to be able to make that um, impact. So this year we're really shooting for trying to get an entire block of houses to rake or like maybe two blocks, like both sides of the street 
to um, really make that big neighborhood impact. So we're excited to be partnering um, with one Glendale and getting that all together. So sorry, I may have rambled a little bit and if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks, Jasmine. I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. I've been doing that a lot tonight to everybody, but um, that's okay. We look forward to partnering with you and, and keeping things going. Um, I, I put the links to both of the volunteer events there that I talked about in the chat. Um, since we're getting close to eight o'clock, I'm going to move on to the next agenda item. Um, we, the, in looking at just the different opportunities we have as a community council and the different uh, responsibilities, um, one of the things that's come up is the need to have a couple of different committees to help with some of the projects that we've got going on. So um, I, if Cody and Ryan, I know many folks will know Ryan. I don't know if folks know Cody, but if you guys would just take a second to just introduce yourselves and then I'll talk about the committees that we're talking about, but I'd like to give you the opportunity to, to introduce yourselves first. Maybe we'll start with Ryan. Hi there, I'm Ryan Curtis. I've been on the board for, see how long have I been on the board, Turner? I am like January, I think, I'm not sure. Okay, January. Yeah, I've lived here in Glendale since about 2017 now and I've been uh, fairly active and I'm just uh, happy to be involved in any way. And then Cody? We don't have sound for you, Cody, sorry. Is this better? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, um, yeah, this is my first meeting attending. Uh, I'm a case manager for chronically homeless uh, individuals and I got my master's in urban planning from USC, but I'm excited to be involved with this community and uh, keep Glendale beautiful. Uh, thanks, Cody and Ryan. So. Um, as I was talking about, um, the, the bylaws allow us to create at-large positions that are specific to a committee. And back at our January meeting, we had some at-large folks, um, like Ryan was saying, um, where we, we had talked about creating some at-large positions. Um, what I didn't realize is that in order to be an at-large board member, you also have to be a committee chair. So tonight we kind of have to dot our I's and cross our T's, um, but I wanted to share something that I've been talking to Cody about and that we um, would like to talk with, with everyone else about. So we get a lot of these requests for review. Um, many of them are very small. Um, an, an example of one that the, the city council approved last night after our feedback um, was the, the vacation of a, an alley that, um, for a development that we'd already weighed in on. Um, and this is for the West End development where they're building a, a, a restaurant and some different commercial opportunities on 9th South and about 800 West. Um, but when these come in, we receive these um, almost every week and we're asked to review different development projects, um, different things that are going on in the city everything from um, fence height requirements to different changes to, to development processes. Uh, and one of the things that I would like to do is, um, and, and we're not voting on this tonight, um, I'll explain the votes in just a second, but what I'd like to do is, is along with one Glendale, I'd like to leave some structure or some processes in place that make it easier for the board to continue our work um, and to, to essentially hand a manual off to um, the, the next board and the next chair. So what we're proposing um, or, or what we're just discussing at this point is creating a process for how these reviews are done. So what I'm proposing is that we, when we receive the comment um, that I post that in Slack, Slack is a communication tool that I use with our board um, to communicate all the different topics. And what Slack allows us to do is create an archive of the conversations we've had um, and eliminate the need for emails in, in uh, a lot of scenarios. And so I will post those in Slack for the committee that we'll be talking about in a second to then review 
uh, we'll then ask that committee to draft a short summary of what the request is, and then the committee will post that on social media and on our website. Um, and then the fourth piece of this is we'll make sure that we get that out to the community to do really research and gather that public input. And for the ones that are necessary, uh, like for example, this 900 West and California Avenue request for review, um, there's a lot in, there's a, a lot of an, in, excuse me, that will have an impact on areas that are not just that area. That's a neighborhood wide impact. And so for that, we'll ask this committee to put together um, a, a site visit or a visioning day or something like that. We're looking at August 29th for the first one and uh, there'll probably be some bumps and dings along the way as we figure the process out. But the idea is to gather as many folks as are interested. And then the final piece of this is after we've engaged our neighbors and had these broader conversations to then submit a response from the community council um, and, and specifically from the chair with the, the board of directors, but on behalf of the whole neighborhood. Um, so I provide this document just as an outline of the process that we're looking to create. Um, the votes that we'd like to take tonight is first, um, I'd like to vote to have Ryan be our communications committee chair. He's already been sending out the newsletter and helping manage our social media. Um, and he's been on a, a valuable board member since January. Um, we just didn't realize that the committee was um, And the, the second vote is to have Cody lead this I don't even know what to call it yet. We will present kind of a formal structure um, at, at the September meeting, but to have Cody take the lead on these requests for review and be the one working to build that committee, draft the comments um, and post them all on the website. Um, one last thing I'd like to show you, uh, we have gone through over the last year with Jeremy's help and Ashley's help, uh, some. Uh, some of our other board members as well have helped us update our website and make it a little bit more user friendly. So we have the projects, the kind of big ticket projects that we're working on as a council here on our, uh, on our website, as well as our leadership with contact information. Uh, we have all of our meetings listed here with the recording of the meeting, the agenda and minutes. Uh, and then updates. So updates, I get a lot of requests to share information um, and th this includes these requests for review. What the, the review committee will be doing is making sure that all of those appear here. You can tell that we get backlogged quite a bit um, by the amount that we're asked to submit. And uh, so that's one of the responsibilities that we'll ask Ryan and, and Cody to coordinate on is the management of this section of the website. Uh, and then the last thing I'd like to flag is if you are, if you like these meetings and you want to participate on Zoom, um, you can always watch the Facebook Live as, as folks are doing right now, but we'd also encourage you to sign up for our newsletter uh, so that you receive notices of our meetings. Uh, and then we're also on Nextdoor, which is a neighborhood communications app. So um, all of that is to say that Given how weird voting is on Zoom, what I would like to do is I, um, entertain a motion or I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, appoint Ryan as an at-large board member overseeing the um, communications committee with Cody overseeing this to be determined or to be named committee for handling all of the requests for review. Um, I think what we'll do just to make it easier on the call is we'll do it by acclamation if that works. Um, and if, if folks have specific issues, we can speak to those. But um, for now, if that works, I'd like to do it by acclamation. So I, I've made a motion, we'll need a second. Um, and then if there's no opposition, we'll, we'll consider the motion to have passed. So no, I would second that. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, are, anyone in opposition? And, and the, the last thing that I'd add is we're always looking for folks to join committees, to be on the board, to be more engaged. So if you're interested in anything we've talked about tonight, please, please reach out. But uh, without opposition, I'll consider the motion to have passed. 
And then this is, uh, so I'll move on to the last and final agenda item, which is just community updates. So if uh, Sean or, or anyone has updates, board members have updates, um, sharing of events, anything like that, this is uh, kind of a public comment time to share anything that's going on. Um, just to follow up, somebody did mention it earlier, they are still doing Thursday and Friday COVID testing in the multicultural parking lot. Um, I think Friday's a little earlier. They start at eight and go to noon and Thursday, I believe is nine to one. Um, insurance is not required. Um, they'll ask if you have insurance just for demographics, but you don't need to have symptoms. I think testing numbers have gone down a little bit like they have across the city and state, but they're still steady and they're gonna keep that schedule going until further uh, notice. Um, they, they, they transferred the wellness bus over to the COVID testing. That wellness bus was doing diabetes and health screenings um, at the Unity on Thursday. So hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll transition to do more wellness screenings um, and diabetes um, even when they're doing uh, COVID, but we're using the multicultural parking lot for that. Um, just another quick update. The construction is just finished up. It just happened to coincide with COVID. There's new locker rooms. Um, they've updated HVAC, there's solar, um, and they're going to be doing a few more HVAC upgrades. So the building is in better shape than it has been in years. Um, and so when eventually things do start to open, That'll be a great improvement for the neighborhood. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. And again, we have open access for computers if people know families that need access. Most importantly, we have people there to help Spanish and English speakers um, to help them navigate what they need to do. The folks who've been coming in really need it for whatever, scanning documents, applying for uh, the PEBT. We've got information on that. We're getting more training on SNAP. We're trying to open up more for direct services for folks, especially in these times. So hopefully that postcard that goes out is gonna help those people know about it that don't have the internet access. So come visit us. We're open basically 11 to five right now with that front door open for access. We've got a lot of community boards. Um, it hasn't been super busy, but people are starting to come in because I think people are still uh, naturally hesitant with public health. Of course, we have masks required, but we have really good social distancing space there. So we want to get that out. Um, and hopefully that postcard will, will let people know. But um, thanks, Turner, and what we can do to help with the Community Council at Unity. Um, we're there. Um, Thank you. And the cleanup day, too, if they need a water station or something like that. We've always done Legacy for Lowell. Um, so, however, we can participate. If they're doing the houses, that's great. Maybe we could be a, a water station or something like that. Thank you. Um, and Sean, do you have a digital flyer for the, the Wi-Fi access? Um, we do, and I can, um, I, I can maybe post it here to the chat. Okay. Um, I, I actually have a digital one that is um, that's the, of the mailer, which can be helpful for both. Um, so I can either post it to the chat here. Um, let me do that before the meeting's over. All right, thank you so much. Uh, anyone else? All right, well, um, if no one else has any other updates, I'll go ahead. Um, I'm gonna stay on the call for just a moment uh, while Sean uploads that flyer, but we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting.